Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to the Chessable Masters 2020 day three of the quarterfinals. We had the two mini matches as always, Magnus Carlsen against Fabiano Caruana and much more exciting Vladislav Artemiev against Jan Nepomniashi. Uh, for those you don't know, Vladislav Artemiev is uh, one of the best Russian grandmasters, number four in Russia and number 13 in the world in the rapid time control. He's very, very strong uh, and still young. 22 years old, his ranking, rapid ranking 2769 and in this game he's gonna play as white. And his opponent Jan Nepomniashi, number 9 in the world, number 2 in Russia, his rapid ranking is 2778, he is 29 years old and he's gonna play as black. And now I would just like to tell you that Artemiev played really rare openings, really crazy openings, so in one of the first games um, he played as black uh, and in the Rui Lopez he played Janish Gambit F5 really crazy game and he got very very great position however huge drama he blundered the checkmate uh, and then he just got checkmated on the um, on the eighth rank that was dramatic but he didn't stop to play um, the openings like this and he opened with Nimzo Larsen attack b3 so continuation of a uh, crazy openings and this game is even uh, more exciting because one of the moves made in this game is I think at least um, game of the the day maybe the the move of the of the tournament maybe it's too much but it's a really exciting move um, and you will have to find it so you know stay tuned uh, we have e5 modern variation bishop on b2 knight on c6 e3 now e3 knight on f6 all of this is theory and Jan Krzysztof Duda said uh, one day these guys uh, on the top level, they play everything, absolutely everything. So you cannot, you know, be ready for, for you know, Queen's Indian defense, you know, for, for uh, Queen's Gambit decline and stuff, because these players gonna play some crazy openings uh, against the lower ranked players. And you have to always be, be ready. And as you see, also against each other, they testing. If somebody, you know, remember the ideas of the opening such as, you know, Nimzo Larsen. So uh, look at this. Uh, we have Bishop on B5, main move uh, as well. And now not D6, not D6. The main move here is Bishop on D6. It was played by Anand, it was played uh, by Karyakin. And we have a couple of hundred of games with the Bishop on D6. So you see already that it's something unorthodox. Uh, we have knight on a3, still following the theory, and now the knight gonna jump to c4. So what black want to do is control uh, with the knight on a5, control c4. Here is the idea. Now bishop is no longer needed here, so bishop on e2, and now a6, controlling b5 square, so the knight cannot come, for example, to b5, cannot come to c4. So you see already a lot of nuances in this opening. We have c4, again, main move, uh, and here black usually goes for castle and, and the game continues. However, Nepo has a different idea here, and he plays c5, uh, knight on c2, so this knight found um, the square for itself, and now knight on c6. Uh, idea, of course, playing playing c5 and the move the, the knight on c6 is, is a common idea. And here we had in database one of the games where a knight on f3 was played. However, uh, e4 and this knight uh, has to find some, some square, you know, to play. And knight on g5 is not really the best square here, okay? Uh, bishop on e5 can be played exchanging this dark square bishop. Uh, and then position of black is uh, really, really solid with this annoying pawn. Uh, d5 is coming, so really nice and uh, open game for black. However, uh, Artemiev is not interested in, in such a, the bad position and he play immediately d4. Uh, we have c takes on d4, e takes on d4 and this move is the best in the position. However, Nepo wants to keep the possibility of playing e4. So this knight, you know, uh, still have to wait what to do. We have knight on d4, knight on d4. 
And now Nepo's idea is revealed here, bishop on b4 first, so the king cannot uh, castle anymore and have to play king on f1, okay? Uh, and only now e takes on d4. We have queen on d4 creating this powerful battery, so it's of course time um, to castle. And white actually had a really powerful move now g4. Of course the pawn cannot be taken because that would be a checkmate so it's really powerful move. Uh, this bishop is still undeveloped so probably d5 would be would be idea. Uh, g5 knight on e8 defending and look at the position uh, let's say h4 and white gonna have very strong attack. The king is uh, kind of safe with the shelter with f2 pawn uh, and this attack can be really really strong so uh, that was the chance for Artemiev to you know continue very sharp way uh, but he didn't do that and instead he played bishop on f3 now this bishop controls this square so the knight you know uh, cannot easily jump there but also it prevents the move like b6 okay because the the rook is over there on the on the longest diagonal so Nepo in this position played d5. He sacrificed the pawn uh, just for the activity of this bishop as this bishop is, you know, completely stacked over there and also with the rook on a8. So the pawn, of course, have to be sacrificed. Bishop on d5 and now queen on c7, moving the, the queen from the, um, from the open d file. We have knight on e2 developing the, the knight, rook on e8 and now bishop on f3. Uh, bishop on f5 developing uh, the, the bishop of course and queen on f4 asking to exchange the queens and here is the quite a critical moment of the game because Nepo has to make the decision the best move uh, in the position would be just exchange the queens as this bishop is under attack you cannot defend that that bishop I mean you can uh, but that's what Nepo did. Uh, knight on f4 and the game can continue here. For example, knight on e4. And this knight can be very naughty over there. So probably just exchange rook on e4. Uh, knight is under attack, so can go to very nice uh, outpost. And now black has excellent position you know this pair of bishop is 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 just very strong it can go to to h3 if the pawn for example on g2 is is moved uh, the rooks can also you know double on the on the open file really strong position and it's not easy to play as white this position so uh, definitely that was that was the the greatest idea uh, to continue the game however uh, Nepo played queen on d7 so he defended this bishop the problem is uh, he gonna have the you know mess up the pawn structure so uh, bishop on f6 g takes on f6 and this is the really critical moment of the game where Artemiev still should go for g4. g4 uh, and after bishop on g6, knight on g3. And he gonna have very nice attack here. So for example, bishop on d6, the queen is under attack, queen h6. Uh, and now this queen have to be moved somewhere, maybe queen on h4, queen d4. Rook on d1, let's say, uh, queen on b2, because this queen always have to look at f6. Uh, and after king on g2, the game could continue. White has extra pawn, the position of the king is completely safe. The rooks are connected, this game can be continued. However, h4 is not so easy to make. Uh, White will have to find um, the way how to do that, uh, to continue the attack. However, you know, this this was the, the possibility for White to continue. So Artemiev had his chance. However, he played knight on g3 immediately. And this is the move of, of the day, at least of the day. So feel free to pause the video and find really an orthodox move. So this is a huge hint for you uh, to win the game. This is only one move to win the game while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So if you think like queen on d3 is a, is a great move, it's just a regular move, you achieve nothing here. For example, queen on g1 and after queen on c3, uh, 
uh, your rook just goes to defense on f1. Yes, you can harass the rook. However, knight e4 with the attack on the on the queen, so you can take with with the bishop and you achieve nothing, or you can take with the rook. And after bishop on e4, bishop f1, queen h6, you threatening the checkmate here. So uh, black has to just, you know, uh, win this pawn back and and then continue the game. It's, it's completely equal, so nothing going on. You achieve completely nothing. If you try to take a, make a checkmate, you're gonna be too late because, of course, this is the very well-known uh, checkmating pattern. So I hope you know that. And uh, yeah, that would be uh, losing. Uh, the move we are looking for is bishop on b1. And we had a couple of tweets where, you know, some people wrote, if, you know, of all players uh, could find such a move, it's, it's Nepo. Nepo always find this move. Now, what is the idea? Look at this. This is a checkmate is coming. Okay. Uh, the problem is you cannot take the, the, the bishop because you have queen on d3 with this uh, fork so king on g1 queen on b1 uh, knight on f1 let's say and after queen on f1 you're gonna get checkmated so uh you are in a huge huge troubles queen on c1 also doesn't work because this time rook e1 okay forking the king and the queen uh, and after that, you cannot take any of these bishops. I mean, if you take the bishop on b1, you get a queen on d3, uh, obviously. And after rook on e8, uh, with check, knight e2, uh, and only now queen on b1. Before, the, the knight was um, defending the rook, so it couldn't work. But now everything works as a charm, and uh, that would be the... The, the winning game. Uh, also, king on e1 doesn't work for very similar reason. Rook just joins the game and after knight on e2, just queen on d3 uh, and white have to give up the exchange. Uh, actually, two rooks for the bishop. Uh, otherwise, th there are no good moves here. You cannot move, for example, this pawn because the bishop is hanging. If you play any moves, then actually rook on e2 winning the game very easily. Bishop on e2, now queen on c3 winning the rook and, and of course the game. So uh, let's say uh, even bishop on c2 is faster. You don't need to take that uh, king on c1, bishop b3, and that's of course a checkmate as well. So uh, what a move, what a move. Rook takes on b1 doesn't work. Queen on c1 doesn't work. Uh, Artemiev tries something else and he plays king on g1. Uh, we have rook on e1 now with check, knight on f1, and now queen on d3 with check. Uh, so checkmate is on the board. Uh, Artem have tried to find uh, some resources, and it's a uh, pretty pretty smart. Uh, queen on g4 with check, king h8, uh, and now bishop on e2. So saying, okay, you take the my bishop, I take your bishop, everything is fine. So we have rook on e2, rook on b1. And now, of course, you cannot take this rook because after exchanging, everything is fine and white gonna win the game. So uh, not an option. However, black had a very interesting uh, continuation here. Rook on f2. Rook on f2. Very strong move. Now, uh, the rook is still under attack. Uh, and if white gonna take the, take the rook, the problem is bishop on c5. Okay, and now look at this. All these squares are actually controlled, uh, even this one. So not much choice. King on e1, rook is joining the party. Uh, and after, I don't know, th there are actually no moves. Queen on e4 is the only move. So rook on e4, knight on e3, rook e3, and that's uh, and it's just checkmate, okay, this way. Uh, and this is a checkmate. All of these squares are, of course, controlled, so... Uh, that would be a checkmate. Very beautiful. However, uh, Nepo play bishop on c5, which of course it's also winning. Uh, we have h4. Now the king can escape. Uh, however, after rook on f2, uh, he played rook on e1 and he had to resign. After rook on f4, he gonna lose the queen and the game. Uh, if he decides rook on d1, attacking the queen, it doesn't work. Simply rook on e2 first. Uh, and winning that rook and the game. Uh, for example, king on h2, queen on d1, and yeah, queen f3, as the queen was 
um, undefended piece. So a lot of discoveries w were, were on the board and now uh, rook g8 and it's also winning. You cannot do anything. Queen on f6, of course, gonna be met with the rook on g7 and whatever you play, uh, it's, it's just losing, okay? This is just a checkmate. So it's it, it wouldn't help. However, in this position, he would lose the, the queen. So he resigned. Really beautiful move. Look at this. Bishop on b1. Can you in bishop on b1? I'm speechless. This is so a great move by, by Nepo. So uh, definitely, you know, the move of the day. I enjoy it so much. I hope you also. And uh, I would like to show you what just happened. Other scores of day three. Uh, so here we go. Magnus Carlsen won against Fabiano Caruana without uh, much resistance. Magnus Carlsen just got... Um, to semi-finals and Yanni Pomniashi uh, also got to semi-finals but huge kudos to Vladislav Artiemiev he played the Yanis Gambit then he played this Nimzo Larsen uh, beautiful lines and uh, and very very sharp and interesting you know we don't need to look at the queen's gambit declined all the time and this is you know <laughs> boring so uh, really great that we could see some other um, fancy openings and, uh, and yeah if you like this game press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss any other fantastic games from these tournaments and others Press subscribe, smash the bell button, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.